that there are no differences in the contour and shape of these crowns. And this will finally lead me to the summary of uh, this uh, lesson. And that is um, when we consider all three lessons certainly is that um, both titanium and zirconia can be applied on a routine basis for our implant abutments. However, when we really want to look for long-term clinical evidence, then we, at the moment, at present, we only have data available for titanium. Um, however, there is some favorable data coming up um, for supporting the use of zirconia abutments and um, especially the biologic advantages of these two materials compared to any other materials um, uh, that we have had in the past, for example, cast alloys um, or even veneering ceramics, these are being evidenced at, the, at present. However, there will be advancements, uh, certain reports, uh, certain uh, data is coming up on new improved uh, resins or composites. Um, however, there we have no long-term follow-up data. We do not know how the tissues react over several years. We do not know if these materials degrade over time. So from a biological perspective, from a clinical longevity perspective speaking, these should be um, considered with care at present. However, we will certainly see advancement in these areas in the future. And one important aspect um, that is also discussed currently is um, how we can clean the surfaces after, for example, an abutment has been manipulated in the dental laboratory, um, how and which pro protocol should be used to really have the clean um, zirconia or titanium surface uh, in direct contact with the surrounding tissues. Here again, we do not have a final conclusion, we do not have data, but this is certainly coming up in the, in the near future. With this, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention, uh, for listening and uh, watching this lesson, and uh, thank you very much.